one of the the main questions that I think popped up on our social and stuff as well was the the latest on the whole whole cat situation. What's the um <laughs> what's the We've got quite a good mix. We've got some mix of um, different questions. So the first one was from Cameron Scott on Instagram and asked how how much training do you do? Like it was quite a quite a general one, but I suppose uh, how much training would you do during a during a week, say in a, in a sort of race season or before race season? Um. So all my training was on Strava, pretty much, if you really wanted to see how much training I did. Um, but I'd probably do maybe like 15 to 20 hours a week, depending on kind of what kind of block I'm doing and whether that's kind of like volume based or quality based. Next one was from Josh Hughes. He said, I'm a nine year old cyclist and really want to get into pro cycling. What tips do you have? Oh, that's really nice. Um, I think that no matter what age you are, it's really important that you've got a love for the sport. So just kind of, you know, love it, be a fan of the sport, kind of enjoy just going out and riding your bike. Um, and then as far as a kind of a tip is, I'd say that you can't practice your skills enough. So like if you're cycling at nine and you know how to ride, you know, you've got skills and things, then by the time you get to my age, you'll be at a real advantage. There's one from Instagram from LJ, um, hand cyclist, and he said, what's your favourite session? Oh, um, maybe like three by 10 minutes. That would be okay. kind of, so when I was like working full time and would just get home and get on my table and I'd be like, what session will I do today? And I'd just do three by 10 minutes. So maybe yeah. I'd just stick with that one. It worked pretty well. <laughs> There's one here from uh, Lara Tipper. Um, what was your proudest moment this year, if, if you had to choose one? Uh, probably um, winning the GC. At, um, well, I didn't win GC. Lauren Stevens won GC, but as a team, obviously winning that at um, Tour de Ardèche, you know, it was really special to see what happens when a team t comes together and they all have a shared goal. So yeah, that was pretty amazing and special to be part of. Another one from Instagram, Brim Baxter. Um, how how bad were the classics? Yeah, that was the question. Uh, I think I'd rephrase that. I think the classics yeah, were pretty yeah. epic. Um, yeah. I definitely wouldn't describe them as bad. Um, I really enjoyed them. And I think that, you know, it's pretty cool to have said that you've done some of the biggest races in the world. And I'm really looking forward to doing them again next year. Miles Jones, how did you tr decide to transition from running, uh, running to, to cycling? Um, it's more of an accident, really. <laughs> Um, so when I was a junior, um, I used to do athletics and um, like that I want, that's what I wanted to be. Um, and then I got quite a few injuries with shin splints, um, kind of stopped um, when I was at uni, um, you know, got involved in the uni lifestyle, finished uni, got a job. Um, and then I saw um, some people that I used to race against running the London Marathon and they did pretty well. Um, so I was like, if they can do it, I can do it, and decided that I was going to enter the Brighton Marathon. Um, and then I just started training from there, got injured again. So I started doing some like crazy what bike sessions in the gym. And then my dad was like, oh, maybe you should buy a road bike. So I did, um, kind of just rode it at the weekend when I was at home. Um, and then there was a women's only session at Aldersley Valadrome with Wolverhampton Wheelers, so I kind of went along to that, never ridden in a group before, couldn't ride clippings, um, and yeah, it all just went from there really. Oh, lovely. And then again from Miles Jones on Facebook, favourite place to train and why? I think that there's no place like home really, because I don't get to come home very often. Um, I just really enjoy kind of getting home to my parents and riding around the roads in the valleys. I think that, you know, they're really pretty. Um, you know, there's lots of variation. So yeah, probably. This is a, another a tricky one from Miles Jones. Um, Belgian cobbles or Welsh Valley potholes, what, what are worse? Um, I think that the potholes can give you some good preparation for riding on, on the cobbles, but um, I'd probably definitely say cobbles. There's nothing quite like it when kind of your bones feel like they're shaking and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, I think obviously one of the 
the main questions that I think popped up on our social and stuff as well was the the latest on the whole whole cat situation. What's the um, <laughs> what's the what's the update? Because I remember talking to you like at the beginning of the pandemic, and you were sort of still 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 hoping and waiting. Is that any update? Uh, no, I still don't have a cat, sadly. Um, unfortunately, I haven't quite worked out a, way, out a way to travel with my cat. But if anyone wants to join my cat campaign, they're more than welcome. I think someone even ha- started a hashtag for it at one point. Um, <laughs> I'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll see what we can do at Well Cycling and see if we can we can get that get yeah. that trend in. Definitely. <laughs> um, grand. Okay, so, so we got to from the women's tour this morning yeah, um how much did you enjoy winning the virtual women's tour this summer uh yeah so um we did women's tour on rgt and that that was yeah. pretty epic um you know I, I really like esports and kind of i did a lot of um riding um on zwift and rgt when i was kind of at work and i'd get home and just jump in a zwift race instead um so it was pretty epic to kind of do women's tour on that platform and kind of at least get to do it in some capacity. I thought that, um, you know, unfortunately, women's tour got cancelled this year because of the pandemic, but it's a bucket list race for me. So being able to do it in some capacity is great. And I think that um, it's amazing of the organisers to kind of protect the legacy of the race. But um, as far as the race went, as a team, we really did our homework. We rolled the, the courses on RGT prior to that. We did some racing on there. Um, and I guess it kind of set a precedent for the whole year in terms of, I feel like that race really showed what happens when you can come together as a team because, you know, it, it was the tactics that we implemented on stage two that really won us the race overall. So that was pretty awesome. Another one from the women's tour as well would, what would, what would your dream women's tour stage be? Um, so even even just doing the women's tour would be awesome. But I think from a dream stage perspective, it would be anything that started near home. So I remember even before I took up cycling, um, I went to watch the start of the men's tour of Britain because it started in Abadir Park. Oh, so right. I went along to watch that. So that would be pretty cool. Or the other one would be, Whenever I'm riding, um, and especially like living in England, people always ask me where I'm from. And I basically describe Aberdeen as, do you know where Junior Tour of Wales finishes? <laughs> or where the RH25 is, and then kind of like direct them into Aberdeen from there. So it would be pretty cool for, I don't know, for it to start on top of, to, for it to finish on top of Rigos Mountain or something. And then I can be like, you know where women's tour finished? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna add one there as well. Um, dream podium, like what would be obviously you, you'd be be on the podium. Who would who would you who would you share it with to other riders? Oh, that's like really. <laughs> <laughs> um, if I couldn't share it with my teammates, um, which any one of them would be pretty awesome. Um, I guess you kind of like want to stand next to heroes, don't you? So maybe Marianne Voss. Um, She's retired now, but Nicole Cook, yeah. Yeah, cool. Final one from LinkedIn, um, from Daniela Mizum. Um, what changes did you have to make as a result of the pandemic? And were there any challenges involved? Um, I think that, I guess, the, the biggest challenge was the lack of racing. You know, it was my first year as a professional cyclist, and I had this amazing calendar of races that I was going to be doing and spending time in the US and training camps and whatnot and then all of a sudden I had done three races and it was like yep that's it no more races you can't ride with anyone um can only go to the shop for essentials um and it was just basically how I adapted to then training by myself and working out what I needed to focus on and you know, the kind of, I guess, the uncertainty of not knowing when the season was going to start and what the next goal was going to be, but it all worked out okay. I really, really appreciate the time there as well, Stephen. No, no worries.